Okay, so today we're going to do something that I've never done before and something that's always made me a little bit nervous. Not so much watching people do it, but doing it or attempting it myself mainly because I have tried it before with a razor, but I gave up because of how stiff the, the actual silicone like sealant was. we're actually going to do today is we're going to de-lid my i7 4770k processor because currently it is running under a stress test at about 85 degrees at 4.2 gigahertz 1.3 volts and it's really not very good so hopefully under my 240 mil closed loop liquid cooler if i de-lid the chip i should see about 20 degree temperature differences with the thermal grizzly condonaut thermal paste so that should mean I should be able to push 1.35 volts at 4.5 gigahertz because I know that is stable but it simply gets too hot so to do that we've got the Debauer D-Lid Mate 2 which is actually the tool that enables you to D-Lid the processor easily without using the vise or the uh, razor method and I've got the condonaut here ready to slap on that beast so yeah without further ado let's strip the computer down and get the processor out Okay, so these are all the things that I personally am going to use to de-lid my i7. Now, I've got the Debauer D-Lid Mate 2, D-Lid Mate 2, however you pronounce it, whatever, sat there. We've got our conductor nor thermal paste. Um, I'm going to try this uh, because we want to really ideally reseal it so it's, it sits properly again, um, so that it doesn't move when we put the when I put my cooler and stuff back on. So I'm going to use this black gasket maker, which is made for engine sumps, actually, oil sumps on cars. But the good thing is, it's rated to 220 degrees, so it will, well, it won't heat deteriorate over time. We've got some little cotton wool buds to uh, remove the thermal compound. We've got some tape to mask off the area as well so when I apply the conductor naught it doesn't go anywhere else on the PCB but the actual chip itself. So uh, yes, let's go ahead and let's go. So the whole concept of deleading your processor is actually very easy, especially when you have a tool like the Debauer Delid Dimate 2. Now it's really simple. You literally just pop the processor in the tool and close the the compressed lid over the top and twist the Allen key, and voila, it pops the lid of the processor off. But to a lot of people, the concept of doing that is very daunting, especially considering if you're doing this with a 7700K or an 8700K, you're basically doing that with 300 pounds worth of processor, and of course, you're going to throw away your three-year warranty. Now. My my i7 is nowhere near worth 300 quid now and the three year warranty is way up because this process is over four years old now. But I decided to give it a go because my temperatures were just simply way too high and a little bit of a spoiler alert, it does give a massive improvement on temperatures. Pinhead on the processor. Wow, that really didn't go very well. Excuse the state of everything everywhere, but um, much to my surprise, there we go. It um, it actually did boot up, and it is working fine for now. So we shall wait and see what happens in a couple of months, and obviously. But I have to report that idle temperatures before. I haven't got any proof, but trust me, idle temperatures before on this PC it used to idle around mid 40s, 45, and then when I started doing anything major, it would spike up to. 50 degrees, we're currently idling at 28, 
29, 30, with quite often it sits at 25. It's just because Discord's launched and it's doing other stuff as well. So I would say it's okay at the moment. We're going to start stressing it in a minute and uh, I'll give you some uh, stress test benchmarks and go from there. Okay, so I've been running the uh, system stability test with IDA64 and it's been running for 18 minutes and when I actually deleted the processor, I probably deleted it about a week ago. So I've been using it since then. I've been video editing with it. I've been gaming with it. Um, I've also been stress testing it and everything to make sure that it is completely stable. And uh, I have good news to report it is. And temperatures have dropped from about the 85, 90 degrees mark. I managed to find its stable overclock. And that was 4.4 gigahertz at 1.38 volts, which was higher than I thought it would. But it is sat there perfectly stable and running really well. And uh, so far on the Aerosol, 64 system stability test at 100% load maxed out. Yes, it is the trial version, please ignore that. Well, the hottest it's got on core zero is 65 degrees at 100% load, and it's currently sitting around the 62, 63 degrees mark. So I class that as a fairly good result and a good pass in my books. So uh, yes, anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and enjoy this new overclock and the new, new temperatures, everything running so much cooler, it's really nice. Yeah. 